Welcome everyone, my name is Tech Weasel. No, I am not a literal weasel. That's just my name, I'll bet you never knew that. Anyway, so, as you probably know, I'm a 12 year old kid who codes Roblox games. If you don't know that, welcome to the channel. You also probably know that I teach you how to code Roblox games. You also probably know I did a video on traps, in which we made a room that locked the player inside and then made the floor fall, which could slide them down a ramp or just bring them to their doom. Did I say that a bit too quietly? I wonder. Doom! Doom! I also get easily distracted by doom, maniacal laughter, yada yada. So, oh yeah, and I say yada yada a lot, so welcome to the channel. I just finished a playlist called The Basics, so we're going to do a kind of standalone video. We're going to show you how to make more traps, starting with the spike trap. This is just an example. This is not even what it's going to look like. This is just kind of just giving you an idea. Spike hurts the player. Goes down and up. Used for parkour. Okay, so let's get straight to it. This step of the video I'm entrusting to you. Grab a part, make it into a square. You can do that by dragging or by going into size and writing something like this. Um, three, zero, three. Except that's way too small. So, how about five, zero, oh, five, zero, five. And there, you've got a pad, so write 505, of course, it's not actually zero, it's going to be 0, 0.0.5, 0, 0.5, as thin as an object can get in the game. You can make it a bit thicker if you want, but I want this to practically blend in with the floor. So then, make that whatever material you want. I'm going to go with diamond plate, and keep it the same gray color it already is. Okay, next we're going to make our spike. So for our spike, we're not going to make a perfect spike, we're going to kind of cheat this. There's two ways for you to go about this. You can use a cylinder, or, and skip this section of the video, or you can get a wedge, obviously make it a different material. Hmm. Well, I think I'm just going to go with metal, which is shiny and you can see some scratches on it. You're then going to make a spike. Make it pretty thin in multiple ways. Don't make it this tall. And now we're actually going to right click on it, duplicate it, rotate the original, but not its duplicate, to a 180. We should have this weird shape with a kind of V-shaped hole in the middle. Grab your move tool and move the newer one, which is actually the original, but somewhat like that, so that the ends do not crisscross. That's about as good as it gets. It should have a really thin end. Um, this is our spike. Cheesy looking? I know. But, next thing we're going to do is we're going to highlight over both of them, but not the pad, and click Union. So now it's just one part shaped like this. Notice how the line kind of went away. So, move that as much into the middle as you can, and go into the properties of this new part. Find Size, and we're basically going to copy the first and second number, but not the middle one. That's the height. And we're going to create... A block. We are going to grab this union part, copy the size with Control C. If that does not work on your computer, use your copy bind. Grab our new part. Oops, wrong part. Grab our new part, go to properties, and change size to match. Now it is basically a block version of that. 
We're going to go into the medium number, I mean the middle number, and change that to zero. We're going to move this out of the way, turn on collisions, which makes it so parts cannot go through each other. It's very useful for making th sure that things are touching or not going through each other. Put that in the middle and make it black, or this form of black, which is not as dark, I'm gonna go with that. And move your spike directly over it after turning collisions off. So that they line up, remember they should be the exact same width. Boom! Pretty good, if I do say so myself. And we're going to highlight this whole thing over. All three pieces. We're going to anchor all of them, and then we're going to group it. That's our spike trap. Looks a little cheesy, doesn't it? We're going to make it so it makes multiple spikes rise out at the end, though. Now, we just need to make it so the spike goes in and out. This code is extremely easy. Well, not extremely. Depends on your... Roblox coding experience. Go in and click script. We're going to add a script to the code of the union to add the code to the union by adding a script and my brain's all jumbled right here. I'm in a mood. We're going to delete this and we're going to write while true do. This is a really basic code and yet I've never showed it in any of my past videos. This is basically a loop that goes on forever. So normally, we would write a if statement and then put while true do inside it so that while that if statement is true, it'll do this infinitely. But because it's not in an infinite, an if statement, it's an infinite loop that goes on and on. Basically, whatever it's referring to is always true. So we're gonna write inside Wait two or one point five seems like a good balance to me. Script dot parent dot position. In previous videos I showed you that we can make things seem to kind of go up and down or in and out by basically just making them appear or disappear. We would do that because it is going to look like it's disappearing, but the reason we can't do that is because it will still damage the player. We we're actually going to make it so this part can still damage our player, but only with a teeny tiny tip. That's why we're going to make it a single part. Note to you, if you ever make it so that these have multiple spikes in them, which can easily be done by cloning the spike in all its code. Make sure that these spikes go all the way into the ground, rather than what we're doing right now, where they can still have a little prick coming out the top to make them more realistic. Because otherwise, if there's nowhere to stand on the pad that isn't dangerous, your player is practically always going to get damaged. So what I suggest is, for now, just make a bunch of pads with one spike on them, put them close to each other and stuff, or I'm going to also show you how to make two versions of the script, one that goes all the way underground, and the other that still pokes out just a little, which is really easy by grabbing your union, checking position, copying this, make sure not to move it without doing this. So, once you've got that copy, we're going to paste it here, but not just yet, okay? First thing we want to do is write vector3. That allows there to be three variables, as in x, y, z, so you can tell the position. I'm going to write vector3.new, and then you can paste in your number. To test this, all you have to do 
is grab your union and move it far away. Don't forget, if your code fails, just click this button to reset it. Click play here and it should be on the pad if everything works. Once that's loaded, continue here. Notice how the spike is actually over here, even though we moved it over here. That's because our code teleports it to this location every 1.5 seconds. But at the moment, that's not doing anything. We need to make it so it changes position. So let's get straight to that. Who's excited? Spike trap. Reset it by clicking this button so it goes to its original location. Grab it and using the move tool, move it down so nothing but the teeny tip of the spike is seen through this supposed hole that we made by using this black block. Okay, so now we're going to check its position again. We're going to copy the position again. We're going to copy all this, but of course we can't actually copy it because we have another thing copied right now. So, write all that all over. Once you've rewritten all the code from up here, you're going to you're going to paste your code into here. So it sh I mean paste the position into here, not your code, sorry. So it should be different than the top one. And this is going to repeat forever. So I actually like having the trap start in a position like this, but it might be more helpful for your eyes to know it's a spike trap by resetting it to its original position. Click play here to test. Well, isn't that something? Our trap is springing up and down, but um, who can see the obvious problem? You stand on the pad, all that happens is that it pushes you out of the way. It needs to do damage! It's a spike! We're trying to make some kind of adventure game, right? I mean, we've got our trap room, and now we've got this spike trap. We need to make some dungeons for our game! So let's add a damage script to it. If you've watched the basics playlist, you can skip all of this by using this red orb and taking and cloning its code into our union spike. But remember, the basics playlist is over, so... I'm going to show you how to make a damage script again. You should have a new script in your spikes. There should be two. And we're going to write function on touched, stepped on, whatever you want. And write hit. Click enter. So you have an end script. Now, we're going to make it so it checks if the thing that touched it is a humanoid or just a block. We're going to create a variable by typing local and then the name. This variable represents the player that touched it. Write hit dot parent, meaning the thing that hit the parent. Find first child. Humanoid. Bam! So now it checks if they're humanoid. Well, it checks for humanoids. If human does not equal nil, meaning it's not not a human, here's what we're going to do. If human does not equal nil, then Easy as this, human dot health equals human dot health minus ten. script dot parent dot touched connect the name of your variable which should be on touched. Let's go test. We should have a working spike trap. Ow, that hurt. Man, that really hurt. Also, make sure first and child are capitalized. And bye, everyone! Ow! Ow! Stupid spike traps.